Peter Jean Hernandez is an American singer, songwriter, dancer, and record producer known professionally by stage name Bruno Mars. He rose to fame in 2010, becoming known for performing a wide variety of musical styles, ranging from funk, hip-hop, reggae, pop, R&B, and disco to rock. Accompanied by his band The Hooligans, Bruno earned widespread popularity for spectacular stage performances, influenced by retro inspiration. With more than 130 million album sales globally, Mars is recognized as one of the best-selling artists of all time, and after achieving a record high of eight number one singles in quick succession, Bruno is often compared with Elvis Presley, the only other male artist to have achieved similar success. Mars also became the only artist with five Diamond Certified singles in the US and has won numerous accolades for both his songwriting and performances. Among the many awards Mars could boast are 11 Grammys, 10 Soul Train Awards, and holding three Guinness World Records. Without a doubt, the Hawaiian native has become one of the most successful male artists in the world, all thanks to the influences of the cultured Hernandez family. Born on the 8th of October 1985 in Honolulu, Hawaii, Peter Jean lived most of his young life raised along with five siblings by his father, Peter Hernandez, and his mother, Bernadette San Pedro Bayot. Mars' parents met while performing at a Hawaiian show, where his father played percussion and his mother was a hula dancer. Growing up as one of six children, Bruno gained his wide array of musical influences by listening to various genres that his parents and siblings enjoyed. Mars gained further inspiration from his mother, who was both a dancer and singer, and his father, who performed Little Richard rock and roll music. At the age of two, Peter Jean earned his nickname Bruno from his father, who noted his close resemblance to the wrestler Bruno Sammartino, and since then, he's been known as Bruno by the rest of his family. Growing up, Bruno was also encouraged to sing Elvis and Michael Jackson songs by his uncle, who did Elvis impressions. From the age of four, Bruno became a regular feature with the Hernandez family band, The Love Notes, but after experiencing stage fright that caused him to wet himself on stage, his parents considered removing him from the act. However, Bruno didn't give up and continued to perform, becoming known in Hawaii as Little Elvis. In 1992, Bruno landed a cameo role in the film Honeymoon in Vegas, earning him his first exposure as a national American artist. Unfortunately, in 1997, at the age of 12, Mars's parents divorced, which also saw the end of the love notes, as well as Mars's childhood career. Mars and his brother moved away from their father, experiencing several years of financial depression. The Hernandez men lived in the slums of Hawaii for some time, sleeping on rooftops in the back of the car, and at one point even in an abandoned bird park. Mars also began suffering at the hands of bullies and transferred between several schools. He later attended President Theodore Roosevelt High School in Honolulu, where he became a member of the school boys group, performing as an opening act at various shows around Hawaii. During this time, Mars' financial troubles came to an end, but it was not the last depression the young artist would endure. In 2003, after matriculating from high school, Bruno moved to Los Angeles hoping to pursue a musical career. His sister had presented a demo of Mars' performances to the suits of Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment record label, which prompted his relocation, but no deal eventuated. Nonetheless, Mars moved to Los Angeles, where his music career would eventually take off. Before that could happen, Mars still had to endure several tough years, oppressed by the poverty of the neighborhood in which he lived. In the beginning, Mars was stereotyped as a Latin artist, with producers even prompting him to sing in Spanish. So Mars adopted his stage name in the hopes of shaking off this stereotyping, refusing to only perform Latin music. In 2004, Mars signed with Motown Records, but the deal held few benefits, and Bruno would move from one label to the next, hoping to succeed. For the time being, Mars worked as a struggling songwriter, although eventually earning excellent credit for his work. Among other artists, Mars wrote songs for the likes of The Sugar Babes, Adam Levine, Sean Kingston, and Flo Rida. In 2010, Mars released his extended play It's Better That You Don't Understand, and a month later, his first hit single, Just The Way You Are, which earned him global recognition. Following this, Mars released his first album, do wops and hooligans on the way to eventually becoming the renowned artist we know today of course after earning world recognition fame and success mars's love life attracted a lot of attention especially after rita Ora admitted dating the please me singer surprisingly despite his fame mars has successfully kept most of his personal life out of the tabloids but make no mistake the treasure singer has had several romances to discuss the first romance in bruno mars's history is one that both his fans and the tabloids know little about mostly because it took place sometime before before the singer gained any true fame. Unfortunately, the details are up for debate, and few facts can be discussed with certainty. Some suggest that Bruno dated Chanel Malvar in 2009, while other sources place the beginning of the relationship as far back as 2007, shortly after his relocation to Los Angeles. The only sure fact from the rumors is that Bruno did become romantically involved with Malvar, which neither Mars nor Malvar denied. Chanel is an American actress, who most recognized from her role in Seventeen Again, starring opposite Zac Efron, 
She also starred in the film community, as well as Bring It On, Fight to the Finish. Since little is known about Mars and Malvar's time together, it's impossible to say how they met, but the reasons for the breakup have long been discussed by gossip writers and tabloid publications. According to Malvar's history, she once worked as a backup dancer for several artists, which may have been how Mars initially met Chanel, though this hasn't been confirmed. Fans of Mars have also suggested that his song Grenade might have been written for Chanel, but since their relationship gained public notice, it came to light that the song It Will Rain was inspired by their split. Chanel later confirmed the romance on her personal blog, which she no longer maintains, and also discussed the breakup. Exactly what happened between them remains a mystery, but according to Chanel, as written in her blog, their relationship ended because Mars started seeing someone else. That someone has been suggested to be Rita Ora, whom Bruno was known to have become involved with. However, other sources suggested that Mars ended their relationship after he caught Malvar with another man, which has never been confirmed. This theory was also supported by many of Mars's fans who simply didn't want to believe the apparent nonsense Chanel wrote about one of their favorite artists. On the other hand, considering the only factual news about Mars' relationship, it seems unlikely that Chanel's versions could be true. Considering how loyal Bruno has been to his current girlfriend, it seems too far-fetched that Mars would fool around. Then again, Bruno may have simply learned his lesson. If anything can be learned from Mars' lyrics, he seems more likely to treasure the women by his side, which discredits Chanel's revelations even more. Regardless, their relationship ended in 2011, shortly after Mars shot to fame. And according to certain sources, after the romance had lasted for nearly two years, some sources suggest that the love affair ended in 2012. But amidst all the confusion, one can't honestly determine what was fact and what wasn't. Whatever may have happened between them, Malvar and Mars' relationship was messy at best. As if Rita Ora hasn't caused enough controversy, the singer came forward about her past relationship with Bruno Mars, which caused quite an upset among gossipers. Not only would the world never have known about a romance with Mars, but the confessions also supported Mars' ex-girlfriend's claims that Bruno fooled around with her. While fans are reluctant to believe the rumors, according to Rita, she was the other girl Malvar mentioned in her blog. In 2012, during a candid interview with German magazine Bravo, Ora admitted that she dated Bruno Mars while they were still up-and-coming artists. According to Ora, it was love at first sight, and for the first couple of years, they were in a very happy place. Rita stated that the couple met when she signed with Jay-Z's Rock Nation record label, and Mars was hired as a complimentary songwriter, who contributed into most of the songs featured on Ora's debut album. The pair worked closely together, but according to the time that Ora suggested they dated, Mars would have been in a relationship with Chanel. This began back in 2009, while Mars was a struggling songwriter, making a name for himself in the music industry. Although Mars was yet to confirm the rumors, the public accepted them to be true, as later evidence surfaced, which confirmed the possibility of a dalliance between Aura and Mars. However, Mars successfully kept the truth out of the tabloids, even after gaining attention, with his romantic life drawing the interest of his fans and the tabloids. Unfortunately, Aura couldn't keep quiet about past conquests, revealing details to the world shortly after she gained fame. According to her, she was 18 years old at the time and fell head over heels in love with the lazy song artist. Since then, fans have suggested that Aura inspired the lyrics of Grenade, though Mars has never confirmed this theory. According to both Aura and Bruno, their relationship was a happy experience, and the couple eventually broke up on amicable terms, blaming their respective careers and hectic schedules for the split. According to all the sources, Aura and Mars dated from 2009 until calling it quits in 2011, the romance coming to an abrupt end after two apparently happy years. Even though it's accepted that Mars and Aura dated, Bruno has never officially confirmed it. However, Considering how guarded Mars is about his personal life, it seems unlikely that the singer would ever reveal the true details to the world. Again, if it happened, then Mars might also be reluctant to admit his past behavior, considering that his romance with Aura took place at the same time he was supposed to be dating Chanel Malvar. Nonetheless, these two relationships are the only confirmed past romances in Mars history, despite the relative mystery surrounding the circumstances. Naturally, no celeb's dating history is complete without mentioning a few rumored hookups. And for Bruno Mars, one of the most reserved singers currently performing, it would hardly be any different. Of course, the following dalliances haven't been confirmed and remain only suspected involvements in the That's What I Like singer's history. Though rather surprising, Mars has been the subject of only two suggestions, both of which happened in 2011. Following his romances with both Malvar and Aura, it seems that Bruno took a short break from the dating scene to focus on producing his follow-up album, but that didn't prevent the tabloids from publishing a couple of rumors. According to the Daily Star news publication, Mars hooked up with the latest member of the Sugar Babes, Amel Baraba, who replaced the former member Mucha Buena. According to the publication, the couple dated for a month at the time of print, and even went so far as to suggest the possibility that Amel and Mars might soon become engaged. The paper cited a close source 
who stated that Baraba was absolutely spitting with Mars, saying that she believes that Bruno is the one. Unfortunately, the rumors lasted about as long as the edition was in circulation, as shortly afterwards, the rumors were explicitly denied. Neither Amel nor Bruno confirmed the relationship, and things fizzled out quickly thereafter. Then, in October later that same year, New York publication Page Six published rumors regarding an alleged hookup between radio personality Roxy Diaz and Bruno. According to Page Six, the couple might have been dating as far back as December 2010, when Mars featured on Diaz's radio talk show. Unfortunately, these were nothing but wild rumors, and despite the fact that the two did spend time together shopping in Milan, neither Mars nor Roxy confirmed that anything romantic happened. The rumors also gained a little support after Roxy wished the singer a happy birthday on social media, but it seemed more as if the two were just friends. As it turned out, this time around, it was the tabloid publications that fooled around more than the celebs mentioned in their articles. The latest woman in Mars's life is no other than American model and actress Jessica Caban, whom Bruno's fans know, of course, is his long-term partner and the inspiration behind the singer's latest hits, which include Versace on the Floor and That's What I Like. The couple began dating in 2011 amidst several aforementioned rumors regarding Mars's love life, but unlike his past mistakes, it seems that Bruno has remained exclusive with his model girlfriend. According to some reports, Mars met the American beauty in a New York restaurant, apparently so smitten with the good looks that the singer couldn't keep his distance, and so introduced himself. Although the couple keeps the romance private, Jessica's social media is dominated by sweet pictures and posts related to her love for Bruno, who also seems as taken by her as she seems to be doting on him. Of course, fans of both Caban and Mars absolutely adore the couple and celebrate the romance, as it appears that she became the singer's latest inspiration. Even though Jessica is four years older than Mars, their age difference hardly seems a problem for the couple, as they seem as happy as could be. After dating for a year, the Jane the Virgin actress moved to Los Angeles to be with her boyfriend, although at one point it seemed that there was trouble in paradise. According to Mars, who rarely speaks of Jessica to the public, his song, When I Was Your Man, was dedicated to Caban. As Mars stated, he wrote the song at a time when he thought that he could lose Jessica, but things turned out for the best and the couple worked through the difficulties. After several years together, their adoring fans couldn't help but wonder when the couple would marry. This question became even more relevant after Marge released his hit song, Marry You. But it seems that their fans might still have to wait a while before the couple share any news of an engagement. Even though they're not married, the couple has remained true to each other, as displayed by Mars's behavior at his Victoria's Secret performance. Despite being surrounded by the most beautiful women in the world, Mars only had eyes for his girlfriend. When questioned about their future plans, Mars only commented that they are happy for the time being, saying that Jessica is his rock and best friend. After about 10 years together, the couple is still happily living in the Los Angeles mansion with their adopted Rottweiler Geronimo. What fans are hoping to hear now is their engagement announcement, which might not be too far into the future. Although, after so long together, is it so important? Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.